It's a bird originally from the forest. When Britain was mostly forested, there would have been very few pigeons. But now today, there are many millions of pigeons, and they, of course, are a serious agricultural pest. Right, well, here we are on a field of mustard that's grown for seed. And, in fact, what you can see is considerable damage that's been done by pigeons. It shows up particularly this end, but it's actually in patches in the field and actually on the outside of the field. But you can see this has been grazed off here, and any of these plants, which, as you see, have been nibbled down to nothing, well, nothing, certainly the crop has been destroyed in the areas that the pigeons have done the damage. This is how the crop should look. As you can see from this, here is a healthy plant which has got flowers on, so it'll have seeds on. Here is the piece eaten by the pigeons, no flowers, no seed, no crop. According to DEFRA and any farmer you'd like to speak to, uh, the wood pigeon is the major avian pest of agriculture and leads to um, millions of pounds of damage. Or you might have many thousands of pigeons on the same field and they'll travel some way for food. I mean, it's, uh, and in the winter they'll travel probably to even 20, 30 miles for food. All birds protected, but certain pest species, and particularly the pigeon, are subject to the general license for the control of pest species, particularly on agricultural crops. This, of course, is vital for the farmer. He needs some way of protecting his crops. The gas guns do a certain amount, flags, kites, shooing them off, all the rest of it. But ultimately, it's only dead pigeons that don't come back and eat his crop. And that's where the link between the farmer and the pigeon shooter come together. Now, uh, how many of you eat bread? <laughs> we all a serious do. question. We do. Yeah, we all eat bread. You all eat bread. So you're aware that how bread gets made, right? Forget the accidental deaths of wildlife in combine harvesters, or the reliance on manure fertilizers from animal farms, or chemical fertilizers which are poisoning our planet. Just as is the case with virtually all commercial plant food farming, countless thousands of wild animals are routinely deliberately killed in order to protect wheat fields, so that humans can eat wheat, making wheat not vegan at all. The following footage is just a few examples of some of this mass slaughter. All of the footage is from wheat farms. Some before harvest, and some after but all to protect the crop by keeping pigeon numbers low for the farmer on behalf of the customers who may believe they are purchasing an animal friendly food. Also, this is just an example of one plant food and one wild animal species. This type of wildlife control to protect plant crops from herbivorous animals is typical across the board, making plant foods no more animal friendly than responsibly sourced meat. Vegans laughably believe the future is vegan. If you want to know what the future will be like, dear, you are looking at the future sitting right here. In the future, people will be vegan. I'm already vegan Holy fuck, I'm ahead of my time Holy fuck, I'm ahead of my time But in the fantasy vegan utopia Who would control wild animals to make arable agriculture viable? Presumably all hunting would be outlawed and so numbers of these animals, such as pigeons, would become greater each year, until these farms would effectively be farming pigeon food, and would be unable to farm viably. Just ask anyone with an allotment about difficulties with pigeons. And you cannot simply put a protective net over the whole of the countryside. And the pigeons are pouring into the wheat fields of Kent, Bad news for the pigeons, Andy, the legendary crow man, Crow, is waiting for them. We're back on farmland near Brands Hatch, but instead of peas, this time we're after high performance pigeons over wheat. This cereal crop is full of protein and highly attractive to the birds, even if it's a bit of a challenge for them to land on. 
which is part of the problem. You don't want too many plump pigeons bending the crop. Andy Crow has been asked over today by farm manager Justin to help him keep down the pigeon numbers. With only two guns, they want to make sure the birds don't focus on this thinned out patch at the top of the field. Some hairy poles in strategic places do the trick. What the pigeons are doing, they're coming into here and they're landing on it and they're pushing. I don't know if you can see that they land on it and they, as they land on it, they push it down and then they, and then they eat the corn. Um, but the problem with this part of the field, it's, you do so much damage picking the birds up. We shoot a lot of pigeons here, a hell of a lot. This is the place we want to be really. Um, but down the bottom, bottom end of the field, it's on, uh, it's on chalk. We've got a field of lucerne that's been sown down there as well. Uh, so what we're hoping to do is keep the pigeons off this end of the field so they come up through down the other end uh, so that we can pick all the birds. Because I hate shooting birds and not picking them, so it doesn't matter how many dogs you've got, you never pick them all. Uh, I'll put the, always put the turbo flapper at the back of the pattern um, and then the pigeons just see it and it drops in. It's on a timer, which you do need. It looks a lot more realistic when it's on a timer, so it pays to have the timer. Um, but always remember, you've got to break the wings. You can't over break them. Break them through there, but be careful because the bits can go on your finger. I'm a toughie, so don't worry about it. Um, but there you go, completely broken. But you've been pleased with this flapper? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm really pleased with it. Um, yeah, I do like it. A lot of times I use the flapper and I don't use the whirly because there's some days they. Um, some days they, they really don't want the whirly, um, so I don't use it, I just use the flapper. Just so you've got a bit of movement, that's all you need, just movement. Um, and that's what this does, it does give you good movement. Always spread the tail as well, just spread the tail apart, just make it, that's it, when a pigeon's coming in land, it's always spreads its tail. Hello, today we're on a field of wheat after the pigeons. Um, I came up a couple of days ago and there was a good couple of hundred on here. So. Um, if that's anything to go by, we should be in for a good day. Hopefully they'll either come into the decoys or um, come up to the telegraph poles. Hello, me again. Uh, nice early start today, out on the wheat. It's 20 to 10 now. I've got 37 birds down for 40 shots. Well, I'm joining on my record of 66 at the moment and it's only one o'clock. Out after pigeons, crows. The farmer asked me on uh, Tuesday to come out and have a go at them at the weekend. So here we are on Saturday, Saturday morning. Uh, so I've set them out over the standing wheat, as you can see behind me. Uh, a couple in the margins that around here. Is a shot. So there's the hide over there, tucked in. Got a few birds here on the margin. And there's a couple of birds out here in the areas where it's already been flattened down by the birds. So let's see if this is going to change. As you can see the wheat's looking really good. It should be coming off in about two weeks time. Just in time for my brother. Andrew is coming over from Canada. I promised to take him out here and uh, hopefully we'll be shooting over some stubble and we'll really be bashing them then. The day's at an end now. Uh, managed to bag 15 which isn't too bad. Um, not as well as I thought it was going to be but still Still nice to be out here, still keeping the farmer happy, which is the main thing. So um, yeah, I'll keep, keep an eye on this field. I've got obviously some more grain which I'm uh, keeping an eye on. I've got some barley which um, is getting pretty ripe now, so um, I'll go up and check that this week. Pound it through the head, look. Andy's dog for the day is the lovely Nancy, whom we think is just great. She saves Andy's legs a few times as Justin seems to be hitting them in such a way the birds end up on their backs. It's not a good idea to leave them lying there if you want to keep those birds coming in. I knew I shot so a lot more and I couldn't find them, so there's one here. And over here is another woody. Uh, it takes us up to 22. Pretty happy about that. Have some good eating then. See you guys later. I just thought I'd do a few last shots before I finish. So there's the woodies, the ferals. 
the hide and everything packed up, my jacket, left the area as I found it, lovely and clear. Right, packing up now, done it again, 100 exactly, so probably could have a couple more but it's getting late and by the time I pick up and pack up it's going to be getting on, so, but yeah, 100 in the bag. Right, we're out here again now, on a uh, wheat field now. Right, we, fi we finished the day, it's been a little bit of a quiet one, it's been really, really difficult. Not decoyed like we thought they'd do. We ended up with uh, 40 birds, so nice little number. Hello everyone, I'm out in the field of wheat stubble today. Um, just thought I'd show you my decoy layout. Um, I've made sort of like an L-shaped decoy layout today, which just follows up along there and then to the side over side where the rotary is. That's it over for another day, lads. Um, 31 wood pigeons, one feral pigeon, and 11 mixed corvids. So the decoying hasn't worked, but the crops full of lupins give us the reason why. Andy has just sprayed them off, and the wheels of the tractor have split some pods. Happy days for the pigeons. It's got wheat, which he's probably picked up earlier. Then we disturbed him. He's cleared off with all his mates. Eat my lupins. If they want them now, what are they going to be like in a month's time? These are going to go to China. That we've grown them for a seed contract. They got more protein than what soya's got. They're going animal feed and that. They taste good too as well. Really? Yeah. Do you want to try something? It tastes like. Tastes like lupin. Why would you eat fake meat made from wheat, which clearly isn't animal friendly, and which greatly contributes to malnourishment and disease, when you could eat our primary ancestral food of wild animals, or eat one responsibly farmed, grass-fed and highly nutritious cow for many months? Vegans believe they care the most about animals, and fiercely judge shame and bully anyone who moves on from veganism, but is it better to have total dominion of the land, with vast monocultures and the killing of thousands of wild animals, or to eat one responsibly farmed cow over many months? Vegans do not care more about animals than former vegans, they care more about their label of vegan. If they truly wanted to kill the least amount of animals, they would eat mostly beef which can be farmed in harmony with the environment. Veganism exists only in the minds of humans. It has no bearing in reality and does not reduce the amount of animal casualties. If someone chooses not to eat animals, that is their choice, but they cannot claim the moral high ground over those who do, because what vegans eat is not vegan. It's not the future.